some baseball here with Jonathan Mayo, lead draft expert, prospect expert, MLB.com. He is joining us on halftime here. Good friend as well. John, good to talk to you. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all, Well, I'm lying. I miss baseball. I really would yeah. like to be watching baseball. I know you would too, especially that. with the draft coming up. This is not this is not fun. But no, I wonder... it's definitely a weird year. That is for certain. Well, but mildly. It's, it's weird in so many ways. You know, if even if you just take away the idea that we're that that you haven't seen a single sporting event, you know, live in person for eleven weeks, and and this draft, I mean, the Major League Baseball has wanted changes to the draft they've been public about it i almost feel like closing this draft to five rounds the the owners i feel like they're they're not they're trying not to waste a crisis you know what i mean i do know what you mean and uh i think there yes there there was movement afoot before any of this happened before the pandemic uh, to shorten the draft. And I think they would have gotten there eventually. And I think next year you'll see a version of the draft that a lot of, you know, a lot of people in baseball had wanted to move towards, which was, uh, you know, 20 rounds, uh, which, you know, I think, I don't think anyone was looking to move it to, to five rounds like it's going to be, or even 10 rounds. So I do agree that they're using what's happening now as a catalyst to get baseball to that shorter version of the draft sooner than they may have been able to. I wonder the thoughts that you have right now when you see you've got such a connection to the players in minor league baseball because those are the ones that you're covering on their way up. And there were, what, about a 1,000 of them that got cut yesterday. Some of them might have already been cut, but it's just a lot of minor leaguers lost their jobs yesterday, and they're, they're just fewer professional baseball players right now, and I feel like that's what we're that's what we're leading towards in the future: fewer professional baseball players. And to me, it almost seems like an existential crisis for the game. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things I've been trying to ascertain, and, and I don't think we know yet, you know, and 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 this is why I, I'll, I'll tap dance around that just a little, is that I, I don't know how the the numbers of released players that's been com- you know that have been coming out the last day or two uh, compared to what happens typically at the end of a normal spring training um, it may be that it is much larger it wouldn't surprise me but I don't know uh, so like I, I I'm gonna refrain judgment until I know the comparison because you know what happens at the end of every spring training is a lot of players get released and people just don't hear about it I think People are, are are much more hyper aware of it because there's nothing else going on. Uh, so I want to I want to know for comparison's sake before I say too much. Now that said, if it is a larger number, then yeah, it is a shame. Uh, part of shortening the draft, there was also a movement to uh, contract uh, a lot of minor league teams. And, and you know, I'll admit that there are probably some teams, maybe some lower level leagues, that the, the time has come to. To, to move on from that, uh, but to go, you know, some of the models that we've seen out there, nothing has been officially discussed, uh, but where it was such a huge slashing of minor league teams uh, would be would be a real shame. Yeah, and I know that they want to sort of reorganize things to make more sense geographically and, and financially, travel-wise, but, I mean, there will be new players coming in this year. It's just a lot fewer. And because of that, because you only have these five rounds, you know, there's so much risk involved in major league teams selecting high schoolers. And I see in the latest mock draft that you put together, 21 of the 29 first-round picks are college players. So even if it's just a five-round draft, do you think there'll be a higher percentage of college players taken in this year's draft compared with other years? Yes. And, you know, I think that part of it is, you know, it kind of works out well. This is a more of a draft, a college-heavy draft, especially at the top. Um, you know, and invariably what happens in any draft is some of the high school players, especially the high school arms, will filter down and the college players will, will move up uh, at, right at, you know, right as we get closer to draft uh, because of the, of the risk involved. 
and that's in general. I think that will happen more this year than in past years. I think the top high school guys are still going to get taken and they're still going to get paid, you know, even the top high school arms. I think what we'll have to see is that next tier of high school arms uh, that, you know, would normally go in the second or third round and not like the pure signability guys. Like last year, um, Matt Allen went in the third round and got paid a lot of money by the Mets. Um, he was the top high school arm talent wise. Those guys I think are going to end up being just fine. Uh, you know, I think it's that next tier of guys, the strong college commitments, whether or not those guys get signed remains to be seen, you know, with the sort of unknown of what college baseball might look like. Uh, there's a lot of question marks on that end of it. So it's, if I'm a high school player, if I'm a high school pitcher in particular, I don't know how I weigh the uncertainty, the cloud over college baseball with, well, maybe I'm not going to get quite as much as I would have from a major league team in previous drafts. I, I'm not sure how you figure that one out. Speaking to Jonathan Mayo here on Halftime, Jonathan, want to get your thoughts on a couple Razorback players that are listed in the draft. There's three Razorbacks that could potentially be picked in the draft. We know of two that more than pretty much surefire, and obviously the most surefire one is going to be Heston Kerstad. Is he the best left-handed power hitter in this year's draft? He is the best left-handed college power hitter in this draft. How's that? Um, and he might be the best left-handed power hitter, period. And the fact that he's got track record obviously means something. Um, if you want to just talk pure raw power from the left side, it's just, you know, it's, you have to put Austin Hendrick, who's a, a high school uh, hitter from, uh, from Phil Mines neck of the woods in Pittsburgh um, into that conversation. But yes, uh, he, he definitely has a ton of power. Uh, a lot of teams like it. He's done it, obviously, you know, in the SEC, uh, which is always a, a good sign. Are there questions about hitting enough to get to that power? Yeah, but I think he's shown that he's done it enough that people are convinced that it's going to show up at, at the next level. And that's why I mean, his name has kind of been all over the top ten. I've heard his name as high as you know the top few picks. And I think that's more of a plan B if teams make a deal. Uh, but if you told me he ended up going, you know, somewhere in the top five or six picks, it wouldn't shock me. Uh, but I think he's definitely going to go in, in the top ten somewhere. Selfishly, I want the Pirates to select Kerstad, uh, Jonathan. You're not surprised at that. So I got a bone to pick because you do not have him going to the Pirates. Jim Callis does. <laughs> but then again, you know, Pirates history, bringing up your top prospects and trade him, and he ends up becoming an all-star for someone else. Well, I mean, so we all know that Jim is a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it could it could very easily happen that way. And I think my mock from a week ago and Jim's mock is very similar. Uh, I think it was just if we flipped what Kerstad and, and Meyer mm -hmm. or Detmers, I don't, I don't you know, there, it was it was just a, it would have been a quick flipping around of two players. I, I could very much see the Pirates taking Kerstad and it may come down to. Do they want the college batter? Do they want the college arm right. when it's their time to pick? If and that's if one of the you know top six guys doesn't get to them, you know, like if Emerson Hancock is there, maybe the all bets are off. I don't I don't know for for, for certain, but uh, you know that certainly could come into play. Next part I want to touch on is Casey Martin, and the last time we saw him in a Razorback uniform, he was he struggled a little bit from the plate. He couldn't he couldn't lay off the breaking ball pitches, but the last time we saw him. Maybe it wasn't the struggle wasn't over, but you saw where he had glimpses of maybe getting past that little trouble that he was having. Athletic, super athletic, maybe one of the most athletic guys in the draft. But what, I mean, what's your what do what are what are MLB teams looking at in a Casey Martin? Is athleticism enough, or what what do we need to see more out of Casey Martin? Yeah, he's such a weird case. You know, every year I don't say every year, but every once in a while you have one of these guys who's a college player with unbelievable raw tools. I'm like, well, what do you do with that exactly? Um, you know, especially if it's a guy who hasn't necessarily used those tools performance wise consistently enough. And I think that's the case with Martin. Like, I, I don't, I don't know either. There's a potential for him to be at least a 2020 kind of player. Um, but there's a good amount of swing and miss. Uh, I think that if you can get him in, and you bring him into a pro system and, and you get him to slow things down a little bit at the plate 
he has a chance to be like an elite level player because of all the things he can do because of that athleticism. I mean, he can really, really run. Uh, there's, there's power there. Uh, you know, he can stay on the dirt. Um, you know, but if you wanted to, you could probably put him in center field. Um, and he'd be really good there. So there's a lot to like, uh, you know, he probably won't go in the first round would be my guess because of some of the holes in the swing and the question marks there. Um, but I think a team could take him say like in the, in the, in the comp round or the second round, and you may end up getting a steal there if you can get him to, you know, sort of settle down there. There have been examples on both sides of where it's really worked. And sometimes where it doesn't work, you know, if you're nervous, you think of a guy like Jaron Kendall, um, who was like unbelievably toolsy and he's not figured it out. For him. I think Casey Martin's got a, a better chance to hit than, than, uh, than Jaron Kendall did, uh, you know, coming out of Vanderbilt. But there, there is that, that small, like, mm, you know, is it going to work? Um, that, and that's probably why he is not uh, a guy that's being talked about much in the first round right now. Lastly, you got Casey o- o- Casey Opitz, if I could speak correctly. Um, right now, sitting at one seventy one on the MLB's on your prospect draft list. Uh, great defender behind the plate, incredible intangibles. But this is the first time I've seen Casey Opitz on a draft prospect board right now. Um, it, probably the biggest wild card amongst Razorbacks to look to be drafted. Do you think he'll? Do you think he'll get his name called in the MLB draft? Yeah, it's a tough one, right? So, you know, he, probably, he may profile more as a, as a backup at the next level. There's some raw power there um, from the left side of the plate, which is, uh, you know, well, I mean, he's a switch hitter, but um, the, le- the the power is there, uh, you know, left as a, as a lefty. That's, that's kind of a backup profile. And then you hope that maybe there's more offense to tap into and he can end up being better than that. Um, you know, so, and then I think what, you know, this is where, well, what the college game looks like is, is this the kind of guy who'd rather go back and, and become a, uh, you know, give it another shot and maybe put up better numbers as a senior or whatever they're going to be called, uh, you know, next year, uh, I, I could see him being called because, you know, coming from a good conference, a good program, you know, maybe he's a guy like, um, Cal Raleigh, who's now with the with the with the Mariners, um, you know, who was thought of as kind of this uh, defensive guy, and he's he's ended up be, uh, at, at Florida State. Um, I'm actually sorry, he was an offensive minded guy, and his defense has gotten better. Uh, you know, maybe uh, Opitz is the kind of guy who's defensive minded now. He's always going to be glove first. If the offensive end comes around a little bit more, then he can be a big league regular who is uh, you know glove first. I've seen some uh, publications referring to the ex- added year for these players. Call them like Corona Juniors. I-, I think they need to come up with a different term. I'm not sure if I like that one very much. Uh, just a couple more minutes here with Jonathan Mayo. I wanted to ask about the top overall pick. Tigers have the selection. I see so many different mock drafts going with Spencer Torkelson, the first baseman from Arizona State. I hadn't realized that there has never been a right-handed hitting first baseman taken first overall and, and i've watched asa lacy the left-hander for texas a&m and i really like him that's who i would take but i wonder what your take is here yeah i think the fact that torkelson you lost him I, I think we lost him and we were about to get a good answer too yeah that's too bad well why don't we cut the break if jonathan calls back we'll get the final answer and uh suspense if not we'll call it a day all right? So why don't we just do that? Um, 877-377-6963 to get in with us on that last segment. And maybe all the cell phone signals in Pittsburgh just got sliced for the rest of the day. Real quick. I mean, it wasn't cutting in and out or anything. Yeah, he just texted and he got dropped. Sorry about that. Yeah, it there's never been a right-hand hitting first baseman taken first overall in the Major League Draft. Plenty of left-handed pitchers have been. Plenty of left-handed hitters have this, not the righties. All right, close out the show. Cherry on the top after the break. Stay tuned.